Last week, the Alabama State Senate tried to rush through a draconian anti-abortion bill without even holding a roll call vote for it. So, expectedly, other lawmakers weren't too happy about this, and they spoke out, and chaos erupted on the floor of the Alabama Senate. Now, the vote on this bill ended up getting delayed temporarily, and I predicted last week when we talked about this that ultimately I think this bill will probably end up passing. And unfortunately, I was correct about that. It passed, and it now heads to the desk of Alabama's Republican governor, who's also vehemently anti-abortion. Now, I don't necessarily know that it's a foregone conclusion that she's going to sign it. I think probably it's going to be the case that she signs this into law. However, this bill is so extreme that even other so-called pro-life activists take issue with it. So let's talk about the bill. As Kate Smith of CBS News reports, the Alabama State Senate passed a near total abortion ban in a 25 to 6 vote on Tuesday night. The legislation provides no exceptions for rape or incest. The bill is the most restrictive anti-abortion measure passed since Roe v. Wade was decided in 1973. The legislation, House Bill 314, Human Life Protection Act, bans all abortions in the state except when abortion is necessary in order to prevent serious health risk to the woman, according to the bill's text. It criminalizes the procedure, reclassifying abortion as a Class A felony, punishable up to 99 years in prison for doctors. Attempted abortions will be reclassified as a class C penalty. So this is downright barbaric. This is extreme even for the Republican Party. They're passing a bill that tells women, even if you are raped, you have to have that baby. That is not just immoral, but it is Straight up barbaric. They're taking us right back to the dark ages. How cruel is it to tell someone who was sexually assaulted, someone who was raped, one of the most horrific things that can happen to a human being, that they are forced to have a baby. And if a doctor provides that person a victim of rape with an abortion, that doctor could face 99 years in prison. The Republican Party, at this point, they are irredeemable. The only way that American conservatism can be saved is if the Republican Party collapses entirely and Democrats become the new de facto party on the right, since they're already pretty right-wing already, and a new left-wing party emerges and takes the Democratic Party's place. Because this level of extremism is not healthy. It's destabilizing. This is insanity. Now, ideally, we'd have three to four political parties overall, but Duverger's law dictates that when you live in a winner-take-all system, you're almost always going to go back to having just two parties. So we need electoral reform. So these types of extreme fringe voices are more marginalized and they can't actually come to power as frequently, but nonetheless... This is what we're dealing with. We have extremists, anti-abortion extremists, passing laws that even the most pro-life people might take issue with. And the reason why I say that is because Americans aren't with them. You can say, sure, you know, they live in Alabama, so this is a deep red state. But when you look at public opinion polls, very few people in the country support outright bans on abortions. And even those that support bans on abortions... They always have this caveat that we've got to have an exception for rape and incest. But this bill was passed without that exception. We're seeing these types of extremist bills pop up across the country since the Republican Party secured a very conservative five-vote majority on the Supreme Court. And their goal here is to instigate a challenge. They're passing these bills with the explicit intent to get them challenged and appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court. So, this is just, it's honestly beyond the pale even for Republicans because they've been extreme, but the fact that they would go this far, I mean, it's unspeakable. It's just unspeakable. Now, the problem is that if you truly are anti-abortion and you don't want women 
to have abortions? Well, there are various policy prescriptions that they could pass. These lawmakers could do things to minimize the number of unwanted pregnancies and thus reduce the number of abortions. But they reject all of these solutions. As Parker Malloy points out here, they can opt for comprehensive sex education in lieu of abstinence-only education, which has been proven to not work. And if they did this, this would reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies, but they reject that. We could increase access to contraception. That would have the same effect, but they reject that as well. So they'll reject all of these solutions that are proven to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies and thus reduce the number of abortions, but they swat all of that away. We want to have our cake and eat it too. We want to say... No, every time you have sex, it must be with the intent to procreate. And if you get pregnant, as soon as conception occurs, there's a third person in the room. That's another human being. You are not allowed to abort that baby. And even if you're raped now, you're still going to be forced to have that baby against your will. This is extremism. It's absolutely extremism. And... It's interesting to me that whenever Republicans talk about this straw man and they suppose that liberals want to ban guns, which nobody's saying that, but they suggest that our ultimate goal is to ban guns. But they tell us, well, banning guns isn't going to work because criminals are going to do what they've always done. They're going to secure guns illegally. Now, I'm not comparing women to criminals, but if you extend that logic to the issue of abortion... If we make abortions illegal, do you honestly believe that that will reduce the number of abortions? No. Abortions will continue to happen, but the number of safe legal abortions will decrease and unsafe illegal abortions will increase. And this isn't just me saying that. This is what evidence dictates, because a 1976 study confirmed that once abortions became legal, abortion-related deaths sharply decreased. So if you're pro-life, keeping abortion legal is literally a policy that will minimize the number of deaths. Because if you tell a woman who was raped that she can't have an abortion, she's going to seek out an illegal, unsafe abortion. And that could jeopardize her life because you thought that you would impose your morality on everyone else. And truly, if you are pro-life... Abortion should be the least of your concerns because we have presidents in both parties that are bombing people, innocent women and children in the Middle East and North Africa. Donald Trump's first raid in Yemen resulted in an American girl being killed. We are giving Saudi Arabia bombs that they are dropping on school buses in Yemen. And what they choose to focus on is this narrow issue where they think, they're being moral. You're not being moral. You're being an extremist. And by telling women that they're not allowed to have an abortion and going a step further saying they're not allowed to have an abortion even in the event they were raped, you're not being the moral person. You're being cruel. You're being immoral. Now, this goes so far and knowing that they are trying to catalyze a challenge to this and get this to the Supreme Court, they may have inadvertently undermined their own goal. Because even Pat Robertson, another anti-abortion extremist, realizes that they're kind of undermining their own cause here by going this far. I think Alabama has gone too far. They've passed a law that would give a 99-year prison sentence to people who could commit abortion. There's no exception for rape or incest. Uh, it's an extreme law, and they want to challenge Roe versus Wade, but my humble view <laughs> is that this is not the case we want to bring to the Supreme Court because I think this one will lose. I never thought I would say this, but Pat Robertson, he kind of has a point. Because this is someone who's thinking about this strategically. He genuinely wants abortion in America to be illegal. He does. He wants it to be illegal. But what he's communicating to these Alabamian lawmakers is, look, you've gone too far. If you truly want to make sure that Roe v. Wade is overturned, what you do is you 
push the limit only to an extent. You make it so that way you pass a bill that gives the state a little bit more discretion to regulate abortion. But what Alabama did here, it's so beyond the pale, so punitive, so brazenly extreme that even the conservative Supreme Court justices who hold a majority may not be able to give anti-abortion activists what they want because this bill just goes too far. So the silver lining is that their zealotry may ultimately end up being their downfall. But nonetheless, in the state of Alabama, this is horrifying. If you are raped in the state of Alabama, you will be denied an abortion. And if a doctor chooses to give you one regardless of that law, he or she may face up to 99 years in prison. I don't know what to even say about this other than this is downright disgusting and quite frankly terrifying that we have one party in this country that's willing to go this extreme, this far to the right, 